Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Bob Kloss, and Laura has the evening off. A contract between the Board of Corrections and its special counsel hired to take legal action against the state is now facing roadblocks with legislators. Again, thanks for joining us at 6, everyone. The heated debate played out for hours today. Samantha Boyd was there in the meeting. She's going to walk us through what happened and where we are now and what led up to all this, Sam. Yeah, Bob, well, they first started meeting this morning at 9 o'clock, and if this tells you anything, they just wrapped up that meeting within the last hour. So hours of debate and arguments going on today, but really the point of all of this, and you guys probably know by now, I've been covering for months the litigation between the state and the Board of Corrections, and the point of all of this debate today was the contract that the Board of Corrections entered with their special counsel, and state lawmakers are questioning if there was enough of a process to enter that contract. A contract written up for the Board of Corrections to take legal action against the state with its own outside counsel now at the center of debate between the board and lawmakers. I think the more we learn about how they conduct a business, the more disappointed we are. The problem, according to state senators Jonathan Dismang and Bart Hester, was the contract used to hire that attorney held the state liable and is now making them question the whole process of how it came about and how the board never caught some of the wording that they say puts the state at risk. But the board's attorney, Abdim Metazadigan, testified Thursday that the wording in the contract was not out of the ordinary. There doesn't appear to be any sort of a process that the Board of Corrections is using. And what it appears to be is one or two people just unilaterally make all the decisions. Everyone else shows up for a meeting and says okay. If there's any error in this process of this procurement document, it rests on me. Right now, Metazadigan is owed more than $100,000 for months of work and so far has not been paid a dime. The board hopes to get the contract approved somehow to pay him, though it likely will not be through this committee. I understand, I have always understand the legislature's position of holding us accountable. You all have to do that. You need to do that. A Board of Corrections member not in the meeting Thursday was Pastor Alonza Giles, though a legislative committee requested every member come and testify. Giles has been under fire for months now over lawsuits he's named in, accusing him of covering up child sexual abuse at a youth facility. He's denied the claims and the board refuses to remove him. I think it diminishes the integrity of the board for him to uh, continue to serve until he is proved innocent or guilty in our courts. I, sir, I'm, I'd prefer not to answer any questions about that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, here's probably the biggest takeaway from that meeting today. The Legislative Committee did not take any official action other than continuing to not sign that contract, and they really can't take any legislative action at this point other than basically continuing to try to pressure the Board of Corrections members to do things differently and to have more of a process before they enter any other contracts if that ever were to happen. Now, we do know they are planning to meet again on the 11th of this month to continue uh, these discussions and to continue questioning these members. So of course, I'll be there and continue to keep you posted. We're praying live from the state capitol, Samantha Boyd, KRK4 News.